You never met a monster you couldn't love. Let's take him. J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World series becomes a bit larger and more fleshed out in Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. This richly layered story is brimming with colorful new creatures, stunning visual effects, and enough intriguing storylines to fuel the final three entries. Join me. Or die. It's no easy task being the new villain on the Harry Potter block, but Johnny Depp is instantly captivating as the sinister Grindelwald and damn creepy too. In many ways, Depp's subdued performance here outshines any role he's had in recent memory. Magic blooms only in rare souls. Rowling's script smartly gives Grindelwald some much needed moral ambiguity. He and a younger Albus Dumbledore share a bond that helps humanize the villain's hostile disposition and that Dumbledore had some affection for him in the past keeps Grindelwald from becoming a mustache twirling magical psychopath. You and Grindelwald were as close as brothers. Oh, we were closer than brothers. Jude Law's performance as Dumbledore is full of charm and even a nice bit of humor, but he doesn't add anything unique to the legendary wizard's legacy that we hadn't seen from the Harry Potter movies. And Law never quite embodies that established Dumbledore persona. Good evening, Newt. Wait, no. Dumbledore. The compelling drama in the film is over whether Eddie Redmayne's Newt Scamander will join the fight against Grindelwald or remain on the sidelines with his pets. Unlike Dumbledore or Harry, Newt, as far as we know, doesn't hail from some great family or have a grand destiny. His superpower is simply his moral compass. Redmayne portrays Newt's inner turmoil well, easily capturing his boyish delight whenever he's around one of his magical creatures and looking melancholy and full of dread when dealing with less pleasant matters like death and war. You don't suffer from motion sickness, see? I don't do well on boats. You'll be fine. The rest of the supporting cast ranges from good to forgettable, with many of them used as throwaway plot devices. An exception is Zoe Kravitz, who effectively plays Lita Lestrange with an air of mystery that makes her unpredictable. You never met a monster you couldn't love. Likewise, Jacob and Queenie's romantic antics offer a nice comedic respite from Grindelwald's dastardly deeds, while Tina and Newt's awkward will-they-won't-they they flirtations are delightful. I think that might have been the best moment of my life. Ezra Miller's return as Credence Barebone, however, is a disappointment. He's all brooding in sadness and not much else. Credence needs more development after the first film, especially since he's the MacGuffin at the center of this movie. And while Nagini's appearance may have been highly anticipated, she feels tacked on and unnecessary apart from her connection to Voldemort. But at the very least, there are some cool human-to-snake transformations. Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald is another strong entry in J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World saga. It improves upon its predecessor by fleshing out the characters in an engaging way, though not everyone receives the same amount of attention. However, both Johnny Depp and Eddie Redmayne are, forgive the pun, fantastic in their perspective roles. For more on Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald, be sure to check out the trailer and our distinctively Dumbledore featurette. And for everything else, be sure to keep it locked right here on IGN.